This is being transcribed as well uh, through Teams. Um, so just as a note, if you do, um, you know, turn your camera on or unmute, it may be included in the recording, which goes on YouTube. We're not, you know, like getting a like million subscribers, you know, or for our channels, but there's a chance someone will see it. So if you don't want to be captured in that way, please just feel free to use the chat. Um, I will have the chat up um, while I am presenting. And I also have asked uh, my wonderful colleague, Anna, who is here um, to keep an eye on the chat for me as well, because we did have a lot of people signed up. We may have some more people still joining us. I'm still getting a few, um, uh, a few requests for admittance. Um, and so I will just say to those of you who have been admitted into the room recently, um, if you uh, don't want to be included in a YouTube video recording of this, please make sure to have your video turned off. Um, but with that, I'm going to Go ahead and get started with things. See how I'm doing it slowly. All right, let me get this going here. All right, so hello. Usually Sam Harlow, our online learning librarian, um, would be doing this introduction, but she is away today. And so I uh, decided that I would be happy to take one for the team. Um, clearly, I'm very professional at introductions and know exactly what I'm doing here. Um, but I am Jenny Dale. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I am really excited to be doing this research and applications webinar today on bullet journaling for research and professional development. Um, I do have the, these slides available. Let me see if it will let me do the link. No, I'm still, I'm still uh, <laughs> transitioning in my mind to um to this uh whole microsoft environment but that link hopefully will work for folks if you have any trouble getting to it um please feel free to put it in the chat and i can always fix it later but that's me um and i am just going to jump into it because we have about 30 minutes and i have a lot of things to say about this topic um, so I'm going to go through today three things, really, three sort of components in these 30 minutes. I'm going to talk about what bullet journaling is and how it works. I'm going to talk to you about how I use my bullet journal for research and professional development specifically. And I am also going to um, have time to answer some questions and share some resources. Uh, and I will have these slides available um, and I may add some things to them in case people, you know, to, in response to questions people have about this topic. So what bullet journaling is? Um, and actually for this part, I'm going to show you a video um, because it is a video from the creator of the bullet journal method. Um, and I certainly can't say it better than he can. So I'm going to play this short video. I do have sound set up so that it should work, but once it starts playing, if um, someone can let me know uh, that, uh, that if you can hear just in the chat or something, that would be super. Not this, this is an ad. When we first I meant arrived to, to at do this, Jude, it was just... Time. Okay, there we go. We keep track of things, the things we've done, the things we need to do, the so things we aspire to. If you There's can't a lot hear, to keep okay, track of. Thank you. There are plenty of apps for that, but I needed a system flexible enough to handle whatever I threw at it and fast enough that it wouldn't get in the way. Hi, I'm Ryder, and this is a brief updated overview of the bullet journal. It's an analog system I designed to track the past, organize the present, and plan for the future. Does this sound good? Okay, let me show you how to set it up. Though this overview features a custom notebook designed for bullet journaling, the system works just as well in the notebook of your choice. To get started, flip to your first blank spread. This will be your index. To set it up, Simply title both pages as index. Now, let's set up your future log. To set it up, turn to the next blank spread. Title both pages as future log. There are many ways to set this up. Here's a simple six month version. Count the amount of lines on your page. Now divide that number by three. With a ruler, draw a line across the spread. Add the months to each box. When you're done, add your page numbers and add the future log back into your index. OK, turn to your next blank spread. This will be your monthly log. Add the name of the month on both pages. The left will be your monthly calendar. 
write down all the dates of the month, then add the first letter of the days. Okay, that's the calendar. The right page is your monthly task list. Write down all the things you need to get done this month. Before each task, draw a task bullet, which is just a simple dot. Add the page numbers and then add this month back into your index. The monthly log provides you with a bird's eye view of everything you need to get done in a month and the time you have to do it in. Okay, let's set up your daily log. Start by entering the day's date. Now you can start adding entries. Entries are logged using short bulleted sentences. Each entry goes into one of three categories. Tasks, indicated by a dot bullet. Events, indicated by a circle bullet. And notes, indicated by the dash bullet. If a task is really important, place a little star to the left of it. This is known as a signifier. Signifiers add extra meaning to bullets, in this case, priority. This is known as rapid logging. It makes capturing and organizing information really fast. Now we've set up all the core modules for the bullet journal. The index, the future log, the monthly log, and the daily log. Now I'll show you how they all work together. At the end of each month, set up your next monthly log. Scan your daily logs for open tasks. X out the ones that you've completed. Now, take a moment and assess the remaining open tasks. Ask yourself, is this still worth my time? If it's not, strike it out. If it is worth your time in the short term, turn that entry's task dot into a right arrow and copy the entry into the new monthly log. If a task is due months from now, turn the task dot into a left arrow and copy that entry into the corresponding month in the future log. This process is known as migration. Migration will help you weed out distractions. It's designed to help you focus on the things that are worth your time. It's the difference between being busy and being productive. Sometimes you'll have related tasks and notes. To help organize related items, let's create a collection. First, go to your next blank page and give it a topic and number the pages. Now migrate all the notes and or tasks into that collection. Now index that collection for reference later. Collections are a great way to organize shopping lists or ongoing projects or classes. Okay, that's it for the basic overview. For more tips and tricks, please visit bulletjournal.com. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Oops, I did not mean to click whatever that is. All right, so that is actually the whole method of bullet journaling. Um, we're going to talk more about each of those components and then I'll talk to you specifically about how I use them for research and professional development. But if you watched that video and had a notebook and a pen, um, you'd be able to start from like just just from that instruction. There is, of course, a whole book because that's how things work. Um, so Ryder Carroll, who you heard speaking there, wrote a book on the bullet journal method. We have a single user ebook copy um, through our library, which is what I have linked here. But if you have a local public library card um, and have access to Overdrive and Libby, um, they have there are copies in the North Carolina Digital Library and in several of the other sort of local um, county libraries and stuff too. That's how I read it through um, through Libby. So that's I recommend it. And of course, you can also get um, a print copy if it is something that you really want to look into. Um, I'm also going to show you this one quick link. Again, goes through the same stuff, um, but this page has a little bit more detail um, about sort of the how, the why, the what, um, and goes into a little bit more detail about some of these uh, terms that he uses in the video that we just saw. So there are no, there's no, there's no shortage of resources out there about bullet journaling. Okay, so that's kind of the what. Um, what you need to get started, and I cannot stress this enough, because if you do start Googling stuff or going on social media and looking at bullet journaling content, it'll be like all kinds of beautiful artistic spreads and gorgeous things. All you need is a notebook and something to write with. Um, that's really it. Um, you'll see in some of the images I have for mine, that sometimes I do um, a little bit of, I add a little bit of color, I do a little bit of doodling, but for my work bullet journal, which is where I have integrated all of my research and professional development content, um, it's it's really just pen, paper, and sometimes some markers. Um, for my personal bullet journal, which I keep separate, um, I go, uh, I handle it a little bit differently, but really all you need is a notebook and a pen or pencil. 
So these are terms that he went over in that video, but I wanted to just give you a little additional context as we go into my system. So logging is the term um, that can be used for adding information to your bullet journal. He talked about rapid logging, um, which is uh, where you keep things really short and concise, particularly when it relates to tasks or quick notes that you might be taking. So in his video, you may have noticed that, you know, everything was in kind of a shorthand, just quick notes. That's rapid logging. I also take long form notes within my bullet journal, meeting notes and things like that. So I think of it as logging more generally. Not everything I put in there is just a quick note. I have some longer form um, notes within mine. The bullets are the indicators that are used to differentiate between tasks, events, notes, and even other things. The original book has a specific set of bullets, which is what he shared in the video, the, the um, you know, just a dot. Um, an open circle for an event, um, or a dot for a task, open circle for an event, and then a dash for notes. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, as long as it makes sense to you, you're the only person who needs to be able to make sense of it. It's yours. It's not, you know, something that um, anyone else needs to be able to necessarily pick up and understand. It's your journal. So, Signifiers, he gave the example of a little uh, asterisk there, can be used to add meaning to bullets. This is something I rely on very heavily when it comes to my research and professional development content, which you'll see when I go into some examples. Migration is that process of moving tasks, events, and notes to another collection. This is really core to the bullet journaling method. Um, and I think that there, there are reflective reasons for that, which he kind of addressed a little bit in that video. It helps you reflect on, do I need to keep moving this task forward? For me, it's also something that helps me um, like actually stop avoiding tasks that maybe I don't necessarily want to do, but really need to do. Um, because if I, you know, I'm writing something one day and having to migrate it to the next day and the next and the next, I get annoyed. And then I usually either decide, um, if it's something that I don't have to do, maybe I just, you know, put a pin in it. Or if it's something I really do need to do and I'm tired of writing it down, then I just do it so that I don't have to keep doing that. Collections are pages in your bullet journal that are connected by topic or function. He shared a couple in that video. One was like a uh, TBR, like books to read, and one was a shopping list um, and that they can be anything. So the core collections, and he showed this in his little sample setup there, the index, this threw me off because I think of an index as being at the end of a book. Um, so I think of this as really more like a table of contents because it's at the beginning. But this, if you take sort of one thing away from the bullet journaling method and you're someone who does a lot of analog note taking, um, take the index because it's really helpful uh, for helping you find things that you might need within um, a journal or a notebook. The future log is that collection for keeping track of future tasks in the in the original method, as I have here in that next bullet, the month you're only setting up one month at a time. So like right now in my work bullet journal, I don't have April even set up yet because it hasn't started. Um, so I have only set things up through March because I do it kind of a month at a time. So if I know I have some things coming up in April or May um, or June, I put those in my future log, which I then refer to when I'm creating my monthly log. I go back to that and say, oh, I have a deadline here, or I have, um, you know, we have a holiday this Friday, for example, which might be something that I would have put in my future log. Um, and so again, so I usually do the, the monthly log for mine and you'll see a picture of mine. Um, I usually do that vertical, like just a line of numbers and a line of letters um, that uh, I use for my monthly log. You'll see again, people online be creating beautiful visual calendars. Um, that's, that's not my style for this. I like to just have that vertical list. Uh, and then the daily log is that space for, I've put in quotes, rapid logging because I do a mix of rapid logging and maybe not so rapid logging um, and where you can record your tasks, events and notes during a given day. There is no weekly log in the original system, but a lot of people do use weekly logs, myself included, which you'll again see. Um, but I would highly encourage if you are interested in this, the bulletjournal.com, their website is like has a ton of free content that you can use um, to help you get a sense of how people are adapting this because it's a pretty simple method, but it's pretty much infinitely customizable to whatever you need it to be. Um, and you can find things in there that might inspire you.
So other examples of collections beyond those core ones, future log, et cetera, meeting notes, books or articles to read, conference notes, professional development opportunities, like a list of things you might want to attend, your brilliant ideas, research notes, lots and lots of other things um, that you could create in a collection. And basically the whole idea of a collection is it's just stuff on the same topic together. Um, if it's a collection other than one of those, uh, like your monthly log is stuff about March altogether in one area. Your daily log is stuff about March 26 altogether in one area. So these are a little bit more topic or subject based in these examples. So to use my work bullet journal, which I had a picture of myself holding it at the beginning, but I'll just hold it up here. Uh, um, this is my work bullet journal. I'll talk more about it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, and I like to jazz it up so it has a sparkly cover on it. Totally optional, um, but I love the sparkly cover. So the most important components for me and for my approach here in that work bullet journal is um, thinking about collections. So I create a new collection for each research project I'm engaging in or professional development opportunity. And you'll see some examples of that in a moment. Um, what I rely pretty heavily on in addition to those collections are my bullets and signifiers. So I have an expanded list of bullets and signifiers that I use to incorporate like additional stuff that's specifically for research and professional development. And in order to keep track of what these things mean, again, so later on, if I need to go back to this journal or I want to go back and look at my um, work bullet journal from 2022, for example, I need to know what some of these indicators might have meant at that time, um, because sometimes they change depending on your needs. Um, so I just always keep a key in the front of each journal that I have. And I do have a picture of mine, which I'll show you momentarily. And then finally, this is like a little bit advanced level bullet journaling, um, but threading. Threading helps connect non-consecutive pages. So one of the things, he didn't really highlight it too much in that video, but one of the sort of tenets of the bullet journaling method is that when you um, are at creating a collection, you go to the next available page in your journal. So you're not necessarily holding like a chunk of pages together for a project because you're not you know, we're not very good most of the time at actually anticipating how many pages we would need or how much time we would need for something. Um, so the idea is that, you know, you get to the end of one page and you go to whatever the next available page is. So things can be out of order, which I know might not make sense for some folks. And of course, you can do it however you want. Like I said, totally customizable. Um, but for me, I use threading because often I'm going to work on something for a little while one day and then it might be a couple weeks until I come back to it and I'll show you what this looks like in my journal. So we're getting ready to go on a look through my journal, which is not um, as fancy as some of the stock images from PowerPoint that I have been showing you today. Um, so just as just to make you aware, that's a little it won't, the image quality may not be quite as high. Um, but I have integrated research and professional development content into my regular work journal, which is the same place where I put all my daily tasks and events and so forth. Um, and so that's it's integrated. But you can also have a separate journal if you're doing a big research project, maybe, or you just want to keep it separate from some of your other stuff. Or maybe um, you are taking a big professional development course or program and you want to be able to put that all together in one spot. You can again, you can do it however you want. That's the beauty of it. But here's mine. So this is my key. Um, and I keep mine on a sticky note, which is not like canonical to the bullet journal method, but almost nothing is. Um, I have it on a sticky note because I like to be able to um, grab it, change it if I need to, like, let's say I overhaul my system, I might want to change it up here, um, or I might uh, need to be able to add things. Um, and so I have a, I have my sticky note here with my key. And this is my real one from my journal. It's on the in, inner part of my journal um, where I have added some of these specific indicators, like a circle with an R means that something I've written is research related. A circle with a Z means I saved it in Zotero. Um, this little sort of book doodle um, for me means reading notes. I've got a quotation mark for quote, a question mark for question, that asterisk for important. If I make a note of a link or a website I want to visit, I use this little kind of cursor doodle that I create. And then I have that PD with a circle for professional development. 
So that's my key and you'll see it kind of layered on through the examples that I'm going to share. And here is my index. I'm currently using a Leuchtturm 1917 Classic A5 hardcover. That's for the for the notebook nerds out there like me, um, I actually got it at Home Goods for really cheap. Um, they had a bunch of them at one point. Um, so this is kind of a standard. These are frequently used by bullet journalers. Um, this is a dot grid notebook. Um, it can be, again, you can use any kind of notebook you want. But as you'll see when we go through, I often do a lot of page divisions in mine. Um, and frequently those are vertical page divisions. And so having the dot grid helps me. So it's not just lined. I have the up, up and down dot grid helps me out with that. But you can get a sense here. Um, this is my index thus far in this journal, which I just started in January of this year. Um, and you can see that I have used my PD uh, and research indicators here um, to like give some notes and some context. Um, but you see, I also have other um, collections like my annual goals, like a timesheet tracker, um, meetings uh, with a specific person. So I keep this stuff here so that I can always figure out where in my journal I need to go to find something. This one has an index, like it was already set up this way. You can probably tell I didn't write any of this, um, but uh, you can also just set up your own, which is what I typically do um, when I don't have this. Here are some, here's a little screenshot, not screenshot, snapshot, I guess, of um, some months in my future log where you can see that these actually just are all related to research and professional development. And that's just kind of an accident, but it worked out well for this. Um, and you can see, here's where I've done a little decoration with some cute little washi tape um, that has a little chipmunk and um, a hedgehog and some gardening boots that I liked. Um, all right, so I integrate that stuff into my future log. Here's my monthly log for March, um, which again, like I said, I just use that vertical calendar um, as from the original. Um, and you can see again, this month, I just happen to have a lot of things related to or dates related to professional development and research. Um, and I can jazz it up a little bit with some mild liners, um, which is a very chill uh, type of highlighter. That's, they're mild. That's why they're called that. Um, so here we go. That's what my monthly log for this month looks like. I haven't set mine up for April yet because we're not there. Um, and then here's what I do for my weekly and daily. So I like to, as you can see here, kind of rule um, vertically and, because I, I find that I get more out of the page with rapid logging that way. So over on the left, I have some stuff I need to think about, do, or remember this week. Um, and you can see I have just some ra a random note to myself, like what tech for reservable rooms, uh, a task to send some liaison emails, a task to make a decision about a course I was thinking about taking, which then I've indicated with that little PD circle um, so that you can see that's something I was thinking about there. And then over on the right is where I start my daily logging. Um, so the weekly logging there for me is just stuff that doesn't have a specific day assigned um, or something I'm thinking about or a note to myself. Whereas daily, um, this was obviously we have we're at the 26th now, but I took this picture yesterday um, and I have this is a good example because I had several things going on here where I was able to use my PD and research um, signifiers. Uh, this is an example of uh, a PD page, or you can see up. I, I did. There's, there's a bunch of stuff on this page that refers to people's names, so I only have like a little tiny snippet of it. Um, but I have this PD indicator up in the left corner, and this is also a place where I have uh, just stuck a tab on here, so that it's extra easy for me to get um, to this uh, page. And this is just a Avery tab that I got, I think, from Target. Um, that made it a lot easier for me to find it during the cohort meetings that we had for this particular professional development program so that I didn't have to go to my index and be like, OK, what page did that start on? Um, it was bright pink and easy to see. And here is an example of a spread for presentation planning. So I um, have this is for a current research project that I'm working on. I'll be giving a conference presentation with my wonderful colleagues, Stacey Krim and Maggie Murphy um, in April for the Georgia International Conference on Information Literacy. So you may have seen this 
gecoil or jecoil um, throughout my notebook because it's just a lot shorter than trying to write that whole name. Um, so here is one kind of spread of my planning for this. And I know you won't be able to see it well, but I will make sure everybody again has the link to these slides. So if you want to um, go in and see more about what my uh, signifiers and bullets look like, but here is a little bit more detailed example. Thanks to my colleague Brown Biggers for helping me kind of visualize this, but I have my key here for reference um, so that you can see on this example page here um, where I'm using some of these um, signature signifiers and bullet points. Um, and I also, this is where I use threading. So this is tiny. You probably can't see it, but we do have way down here in the bottom right. Um, I, next to the pre-numbered 47, which came with the, this particular one comes numbered. Most of my journals that I have don't come with page numbers. So I just go, you know, take a few minutes and add them in throughout a journal. Um, but this one has a slash and then 52, which indicates that to continue these notes, I need to go to page 52. Because um, you can kind of see the weight of the Leuchtturm paper is you can kind of see ghosting from the back and that doesn't doesn't bother me. If that's something that bothers you, I can recommend a paper with a higher paper weight or a journal with a higher paper weight um, so that you don't see that stuff. But I kind of like I kind of like it. It feels lived in. Um, and then so you can see that right after this, that which I had set aside for this, I did my March monthly log. And so I couldn't just go to the next page and start taking notes. So that's what I meant earlier about how how I use threading to help me connect non consecutive pages. And that's it. That's how I use my system for research and professional development. Um, and I would be delighted to answer any questions that you have now. Um, and I would also be delighted to take questions later by email. I'll put my email in the chat here. Oh, and I just, I missed that chat earlier, but I see that someone has confirmed that this paper for the Leuchtturm is fountain pen friendly, uh, is important to many. Um, I used, uh, I'm a gel pen enthusiast, so that's mostly what I use, um, and fine liners like drawing pens, but, um, you know, you figure out what you like. So does anyone have any questions for me at this point? Yeah, the, the ghosting isn't too terrible. Um, I agree. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to, well, no, here, what I'll do. I'm going to put this up um, on the screen while I'm answering some of these questions. Um, so I see a uh, question here. What are the challenges you found getting started? I got really wrapped up in what I was, so a couple, let me answer this in a couple ways. I tried bullet journaling several times. Um, so I had first heard about it in 2013. So, you know, over 10 years ago, I tried it a couple of times. I just wasn't keeping up with it. Um, and, um, but in 2021, that's when I just, I like, really, it was YouTube. I was watching YouTube stuff and there was a bullet journal thing. I was like, yeah, I better try this again. Um, and for some reason, this time it stuck. And I think one of the things that is really important is figuring out how your your analog system integrates with your digital system because we have Outlook, we have you know all these other tools, um, and then we also you know could have can have a notebook and you can go back and forth. But for me, that was like a that was I had to figure that out um, for myself, how that might work for me. So, but the other big thing that struck that I struggled with when I got back into it, and then again, I've been doing it consistently for about three years total now, um, was seeing all the beautiful, intricate things that people were creating online and being like, oh, time for that. I can't, you know, draw out a habit tracker that looks like, you know, a control board for a computer or whatever, like people do all kinds of cool, but very time intensive stuff. Um, so what really helped me was actually just going back to the original book and being like, oh, okay, I can do the basics and then I can add things on. And like I said, in my personal bullet journal, which I use for some like productivity to do stuff, but a lot just for like memory keeping of like, what was I doing on this day? Like what, you know, what, what was I watching? What was I eating? That kind of stuff that just kind of helps me um, just remember things in my in my personal life as well. Um, and then uh, the pen of choice, Melody, what a great question. I have a bunch. Um, I really like uh, inner gel pens from uh, Pintel. Um, 
The Energel Clina is one of my favorites. I like the Uniball Signo pens. These are all just gel pens because that's, again, that's what I'm into. Um, I recently got some Muji gel pens that I had seen a bunch um, online and I was like, they can't be that good, but they're actually really nice. They write really smoothly. And, you know, I'm, I spend a lot of time now like handwriting in these journals. So the experience, you know, matters. Um, and then there's also, if you're going to be doing a lot of highlighting and still want to use a gel pen, there's a Sarasa pen called the Mark On um, that will, uh, that works really well if you're going to highlight over it. Um, usually if I'm going to highlight, which is for me mostly just like, so you can kind of see like uh, a highlight like the day or the heading, um, that then I usually write that first in a fine liner. Um, and right now I'm using um, Pigma, micron, Pigma Microns um, are my favorite of those. Um, and then, okay, so we've got some suggestions for, these are oh, Twisby and Kaweco, Kaweco, I never know how to say it. People say it differently on the internet, but um, our uh, fountain pens, there uh, is a great store in Chapel Hill for folks who love um, fountain pens and other pens called Crazy Allen's um, that had closed um, and then reopened under new management. I just learned that recently, but there are lots of places to get great pens. Um, yes, Amy, I just learned this recently. Oh, Kathleen, I was going to use an arc system note for, for this. The pages are easily repositioned. I highly recommend systems like that because again, it's like about whatever works for you. And if whatever works for you is being able to take a chunk out and be able to put a chunk in, that's awesome. Um, because that just means you're going to be using it more and you're going to be using it likely. If you're not familiar with the arc system, you may, it's also sometimes called disc, just disc bound planners. Um, some people use ring bound planners, things like that. I see that like, again, to me, it's like whatever you're into. Um, and I like a bound planner. Um, but I see a lot of the, um, I see a lot of benefits for using the things where you can check, you can take things in and out. Um, hope, yes, the Tombow brush pens do work really well as highlighters. I agree. I did, I don't think I ended up having any, showing any pages in my pictures, but I used um, Tombow's for like, let's see, I don't know if you can, no, I'm so bad at this. This just says work. This is like my opening page on this. Um, but I use Tombos for that um, because I love them. Um, they're really good water-based markers. Um, I have a couple of resources here in addition to the um, uh, Bullet Journal website, which again, there's like a ton of free good stuff. Um, the, the book, I think if you're like, yeah, I want to like spend some time thinking about this. Um, the book goes into a lot more detail about the sort of mindfulness element of it. Um, and one of the things I didn't say is that something I like about the bullet journal method as a productivity system is that it is not, um, it is not about like, go, 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 do more, make more, spend more time doing things, get it all done. It's really about like helping you think about what, what do you have to do? How can you do it? How can you prioritize it? Um, and then again, there's so like a lot of reflection and mindfulness in there that works well for me. Um, and then I have a couple of links to some, um, this is just like a blog page. Uh, and then I have a few links to some YouTube videos that I find useful. Um, people on YouTube and Instagram, the people who are doing a lot of really help, content that I found really helpful for like thinking through my research system are PhD students um, because they're usually balancing a lot of different things and they uh, do a great job of kind of tracking that and, sh and showing and sharing. So you can actually just go to YouTube and search like research bullet journal or something and you will likely be able to find some of these things that I have added here, but also um, some stuff that I may not have added here. Any other questions? Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, it took me a little a little time to kind of find it, but I, I find the, um, the freedom of like a page that I write on also, how I, I didn't have any good examples in this journal, but in my, last bullet journal like I had a bunch of pages that had like mind maps and stuff where I was just trying to brainstorm and and, and I that doesn't work well for me digitally so being able to do it on paper was helpful 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Great question. Um, I first of all, I'm glad it's really new to you. One thing I just thought about that I'll add here um, is that I did do an internal presentation in the libraries last year about like bullet journaling generally, and I'll link my slides it, to that in here too if you want to get um, get some more. I think it was like bullet journaling 101 or something. Um, and Sam should be in touch in the next few days to share out this recording. But I do have these slides available. Let me put the link back in here. I have a little go link. Um, and I didn't address this because I, I don't, I feel weird saying it. Um, but a lot of people call bullet journaling Bujo for short. And I don't know, something about that sounds weird for me. But that's why that's the um, go link for this. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Um, I'm delighted to have you here. Uh, if you have questions or just want to talk to me about bullet journaling or planning or notebooks or pens, please reach out to me at any time. Once again, I'll put my email address in here um, and I would love to hear from you, but keep uh, keep an eye on your email uh, for um, a uh, link to the recording and stuff um, from Sam. All right. Thanks, everyone. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.